everyone. I'm Keish from the Monastic Academy. We finished a circling and emotions retreat here last week. And in his opening talk, Ryushin, who's another resident here, gave a framework about emotions as pointing to our ethics, the things that we care about, the things that we value. So we'll be sharing a brief clip from that talk right now. And then we'll go into a few practical tips, question and answer with him on how to integrate that into your everyday life. One way of looking at it is that ethics, the emotions we feel, our, our emotional response to the world, indicate a kind of implicit moral ordering of things. They reveal what we think or believe is valuable, our values, what is meaningful, even what is sacred to us. And there's a kind of wisdom located in them that we can learn to live in accordance with. So when I'm angry, I have a sense, and you can check if you get angry, you have a sense that there is something valuable that needs protecting. It's a movement of the being to protect that which is worth loving. If I feel sad, it's because I sense that something worth loving is in danger of being lost. And if I feel ashamed, if I feel ashamed skillfully, it's because I have a sense that I'm not living up to my integrity. And it's worth learning to experience the ethical dimension of emotions. And so as we heal, as we clarify our aspiration, what's worth loving, emotions can become guides to ethical living. I wish we also had a clip of me getting angry during the retreat to show at this time, but unfortunately we don't. Uh, I can just say from my personal experience that having this framing of emotions as pointing to things that I really care about and value was really helpful for me during this retreat. Mm. And I'm wondering if you have any tips for people watching this at home mm. on how to integrate this um, or explore this relationship between emotions and ethics in their personal lives. Totally, yeah. So a um, couple things come to mind. The first is to really hold this framing. Most people actually just don't relate to their emotions at all as if they're indicating some kind of ethical intelligence. And so just to presence that frame as you interact with your emotions, as you kind of explore or relate to your emotions, does a tremendous amount of work, right? So just bringing that frame forward um, is huge, actually. And so next time that you do get angry, and it doesn't even have to be necessarily in the moment that you're angry. It might be subsequently if you're, say, journaling or processing with a friend, you can kind of just inquire, like, what was I really caring about that I was, my, my being was standing up to protect? And, and just so with other emotions, you kind of start to just wonder about the ethical intelligence in your emotional experience. And that just starts to open up a whole territory of really interesting revelations and clarity. Um, and so that's the most important thing is just to hold that frame. The other way in that I've explored a lot in, in circling and relational practices and also just looking out at the world is seeing how values are at play in conflict. So it's the case that when there is conflict, there's usually two different uh, agents who are standing up for values that for whatever reason they think are in conflict. Yeah. And so often we get kind of sucked into the argumentation and like the layers on top of those values. But if we can kind of peer through that and look at the underlying values, it can actually simplify conflict a lot. And we can say, oh, you're caring about this. You're caring about this. And then we can even wonder like, is there a way that we can actually get both of those values met in this instance? Um, and so there's this kind of art of like looking underneath the uh, fireworks of conflict into the underlying values. And once we do that, um, 
a lot can open up in terms of how we how we move in conflicts, how we resolve conflicts. And amazingly, this can apply like with yourself and somebody else. It can apply like if your friends or colleagues are, are fighting, but it can also um, apply in your own psychology. So if you have an inner conflict, you can start to look at like, what are these two parts of myself caring about and how can I help them see each other more clearly? And that can create a lot of growth. Thank you everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Feel free to share this with your friends who you think would benefit from the wisdom shared today. And also leave a comment if you have any questions.